Alright, so everybody, in this video, we are going to look at doing all four operations. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division uh, with all rational numbers, right? So yesterday, we did all of these with just integers. Today, we're going to introduce some fractions and decimals into the mix. Um, so our goal, again, is to solve problems with all rational numbers using all four of our operations. So if you scroll down on your OneNote, again, this is um, the notes page for today. Don't get it mixed up with the one from yesterday. So you can find this, it's in your unit two tab. And then we're gonna have you give the warm up questions a try. So the video is gonna pause here in a second, give those a try, punch in your answers for one and two, and then we are gonna go over them. All right, so let's look at number one. So this is a subtraction problem with fractions. So maybe you were thinking though, if you do keep change opposite, you can switch this to an addition problem. So keep the 8 ninths change to a um, plus sign, and then the opposite of negative 2 thirds is positive 2 thirds. So we are good to add these fractions. However, we just need to make sure they have common denominators. So let's take our fraction on the right, and we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 3, because that will give us a 9 in the denominator. So then we'll be able to add these two fractions. So that's the 9 in the denominator. 2 times 3 gets us our 6 in the numerator. And then all we have to do is just add our numerators, gets us 14, and we're going to keep our denominator. So 14 ninths looks like D is going to be the best answer choice for number one. Okay, scrolling over to number two. So first thing, they gave us a decimal and a fraction. So instead of doing um, both decimals, let's switch the decimal into a fraction. So again, we said on Monday we learned this, right? Two numbers after the decimal point tells us that is the hundredths place. So we can um, switch this to 45 over 100, and then we're going to say divided by 9 tenths. So you have two fractions that are divided, so you can do keep change flip to switch this to a multiplication problem. So keep the 45 over 100, change to a multiplication symbol, and flip the second fraction to become 10 over 9. So we could multiply straight across and get our 450 over 900. But those are big numbers. So if we did some cross simplification first, so I see a 100 and a 10. So this can be reduced to a 1 and a 10. And then 9 and 45. This can be reduced to a 1 and a 5. So now if we multiply across, the numbers are much smaller. It's just going to give us a 5 over 10, which you know you can simplify that into a 1 half, and it will be positive. So it looks like B is going to be the best answer for this one. So if you got both of those, that is awesome. Um, if not, hopefully these explanations helped. Um, on the next slide, this is just a little refresher if you need um, to look back when you are dealing with fractions. So again, we said adding and subtracting fractions. Biggest thing is you need your common denominator. Multiplying fractions, just like we saw in the second warm-up problem, you just need to multiply across the numerators and across the denominators. And dividing fractions, the only extra step is doing a keep change flip to make it, a di um, to make it multiplication, and then you would multiply across the top and across the bottom. So if we scroll to the next slide, Side-by-side -side examples. So we are going to look at the same, very similar problems, just with different operations. So adding and subtracting fractions um, is the blue box. Multiplying is the green box. And yellow is the dividing box. So if you want to pause this video for a second, why don't you see what you could come up with for adding and subtracting? Um, and then we'll look at multiplying and dividing together. So we're going to pause it, give you a chance to try adding and subtracting, and then we will review it. All right, so for adding and subtracting, we just need common denominators. So if we switch the one half to a two fourths, we're good to go. Now we can just add our whole numbers together. So negative two plus negative three gets us a negative five. And then negative two fourths plus negative one fourth will get us our negative three fourths. We can combine those and get our final answer of negative 5 and 3 fourths. Okay, you could have also switched both of those 
uh, mixed numbers into improper fractions and done it that way. It is your choice. All right, so multiplying though, we need to switch them into improper fractions. So let's do that. Again, we take our denominator times the whole number, and then we add the numerator. So this would give us a negative 5 halves times negative 13 fourths. Okay, again, you could see about canceling anything out. It doesn't look like we could do that, so we can just go right ahead and multiply across. So if we do this, um, first of all, you have it, two negatives. So our sign rules say negative and negative will be happy. So this will give us 65 in the numerator over 8 in the denominator. And it doesn't really look like we can simplify that too much, so we can just leave it for the sake of this example. Dividing is a little bit different. Again, two subtraction signs, two negatives, I mean, will give us a positive answer. So that's good. Let's do our um, improper fractions, which are going to be the same as the last way with multiplying. So negative 5 halves divided by negative 13 fourths. So we're dividing two fractions. So let's keep, change, and flip. So negative 5 halves times negative 4 thirteenths. All right, and if we multiply across the numerator, that will give us a 20, and then the denominator, 13 times 2, should give us 26. Okay, this can be simplified. Um, you can take a 2 out of both of them and make it 10 over 13 again. And you could have seen that by cross-simplifying over at this step. Oops, sorry, this should be a 1. All right, so 10 thirteenths looks like it would be our final answer if that was a dividing problem. So this was just a quick opportunity for you to look side by side at the different methods and see how it would change your answer. All right, so now we're going to get into a real example, though, with um, fractions, decimals, and all of these different operations. So let's just go through our checklist like yesterday. Do we have any parentheses? Don't think so. So we can cross that out. There's nothing we need to do. There's also no exponents to deal with. So we can go right to multiplying and dividing. And the way we do this is from left to right. So we are going to start. Here is the first multiplication problem that we see. So 2 times 1 third. So when we multiply, it says take any whole numbers and make it a fraction. So I do see we have a whole number, the 2. So we're going to rewrite that as 2 over 1 times the 1 third. So 2 over 1 times 1 third will give us a fraction of 2 thirds. So now we have 5.5 .5 plus 2 thirds divided by 5 sixths. All right, we are not done with multiplying and dividing yet, though, because we still have a division problem with two fractions. So let's go ahead and evaluate that. So two fractions, we are going to do our K, C, F, right, to switch that into multiplying. So this becomes two-thirds times six-fifths, and we still have this 5.5 .5 out front. Okay, all we have to do is actually multiply these two fractions together right across the top. 6 times 2 gives us 12, 3 times 5 gives us 15, and then we still have the 5.5. And for the sake of this example, they didn't specify, but we can just leave our answer in mixed number form. Um, so what we could do is rewrite this as 5 and 1 half. That way we can just add our fractions together. Of course, we need common denominators. So in order to get, so you can't really make it a 15 because 2 times what would give you 15? No whole number. So let's just make it 30 in the denominator. So we can do times 15 for our first fraction and times 2 for our second fraction. So our fractions become 5 and 15 thirtieths plus, um, and this one would give us 24 30ths. 
So if we just do our fractions together, on the side, 15 plus 24 gets us 39. So 39 thirtieths as a mixed number, this would give us 1 and 9 thirtieths. And we still have the 5 out front that we haven't used yet. So our final problem becomes 5 plus 1 and 9 thirtieths, which you can combine as 6 and 9 thirtieths. So definitely a lot going on in this problem for sure, but just making sure that you get your common denominators when you are adding your fractions is really important. So I thought this was a really good, um, definitely challenging example, but hopefully you can see where we were going with this. Okay, we just have one more real quick one to look at, which is a word problem. So it says Rachel has five books in her backpack. Three of them weigh two and one fourth pounds, and the other two books weigh one and three fourths pounds. So the way we can write an expression for this is by using multiplication and addition. So basically we have the three books that are in yellow plus the two books that are in blue. So we know the three books that are yellow are each worth two and one fourth. So we can set up a multiplication problem like that. And again, all of this is from the yellow ones. And then we're going to add the two books that are each worth one and three fourths. And again, those are the blue ones. So this is where our expression comes from. Right? We have to use the multiplying symbol to show that each one is worth that certain amount. Um, here's our expression. Why don't you pause the video, see if you can get an answer, and then put it in an Edpuzzle, and we will check. All right, so if you first take care of the yellow um, part, so the yellow books, so you need to switch the 3 to an, um, a fraction, so 3 over 1, and then make 2 and 1 fourth into 9 fourths as an improper fraction. You multiply straight across the top and the bottom, should give you 27 fourths. And then for the blue books, same thing, switch 2 to 2 over 1 times 7 fourths should get you your 14 fourths. You have your common denominators already. Um, all you have to do is add the numerators, should give you 41 fourths. So that would be the total weight, and that's in pounds. So 41 fourths pounds. And of course, you could switch it to a mixed number if you wanted to, um, but for the sake of this video, that is good. Okay, so again, we're going to do some more practice today, more like problems like example one. Make sure, though, you are comfortable with looking for um, your PEMDAS rules and following that order. And, of course, there are like mini multiplication problems, mini division problems, mini exponent problems um, embedded into those bigger ones. So just make sure you're using that cheat sheet that we worked on, um, and that should really help you. So thank you for checking this out. We're going to dive into some practice today, uh, but hopefully this video helped you.